So we were talking about uh, beside all those hydrothermal huh, sites that we can get steam from. And, and we can build a thermal power plant just running on that steam. There is also advantage of using geothermal energy in the context of ground source heat pump. And we explained last time, what is a heat pump? It's a simple HVAC machine. Huh? And I mean, really that is a sketch. This is uh, the sketch on a BH diagram for a heat pump. This is a vapor dome. And the heat pump is taking heat from this place to that place, taking it from 70 degree room to say 100 degree ambient outside. How do you pump the heat from here to here? By, by making the refrigerant go like this. So the refrigerant go into the room, the 70 degree room at 50. So of course he will suck the energy out suck the energy from that room, making the room even colder. And he get from vapor to, sorry, from liquid or wet liquid to vapor. Compressor take him all the way up. Now he go out where the temperature here is 100, but he's higher, he's say 120. And so yes, he will get cool. He will dump that heat to the 100 degree freezing air outside. And he will basically become by cooling himself, he'll become saturated liquid. You throttle him and he become very cold at low pressure and he's ready for reheating again. So the, the outside or the, the condenser and the evaporator are two coils, okay? Two coils, coil here and coil here, connected to the compressor and the throttling device. So now the exit of the compressor, which is here, doesn't always have to, that exit of the compressor doesn't always have to go to the, doesn't have to go to the outside. Huh? The exit does not have to go to the outside. The outside unit does not have to be the condenser. The, the exit of the compressor could also go to the inside. In the winter, if it's like really cold outside, inside, because it's, uh, it's winter and you want to heat your room. So imagine if this is like a uh, 60 degree room and you want to heat it up. So you need to send very hot air or hot refrigerant inside the room. So what happened with that valve is that the, he take the exit of the compressor and say, no, 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 let's not go outside and heat the ambient. Let's go inside and heat this room. And so they heat the room, and then once it's cold enough, or like once he finishes his job heating the room, you throttle him, so the, the thing come back and he gets throttled, okay? And then that throttling go to the outside unit, cooling the outside cold air already, okay? So this go to the now, say 30 degree ambient outside. And you end up cooling the 30 degree ambient to 30 or 28 or something, whatever how cold your refrigerant is. And by the time you are done and you are vapor because you heated the ambient, the compressor take you all the way up and the journey continues. <coughs> so the point is this cycle can work as heat pump or uh, AC. <coughs> <coughs> Say that again. Do they have a bump <coughs> that will freeze in the winter? Well, depending on that refrigerant, that refrigerant shouldn't have any problem, right? See that that refrigerant is actually how you can cool your freezer. How does it get your freezer really cool? Because he's even colder than your freezer, right? And you go in and you cool the freezer even more. So the refrigerant is even colder than the freezer to suck energy from the freezer and keep all your chicken and meat and everything cool. So actually I had a problem one year on, on the ground source heat pump. 
And I said, well, the, it's like winter, room is like say 70 and the ambient outside is 30 and calculate the COP of the heat pump, which by the way is what you're gonna do in this project, right? So in this project, the heat pump is heating the 80 degree water, right? By what? By outside air that's like 16 degrees C, or like let's call it Fahrenheit 60. So he's heating 80 degree Fahrenheit water from 40 degree if you start in the morning and 60 degree at, at the, the best case scenario. So how do you heat 80 degree water by 40 degree air by, by this cycle? Okay. So anyway, so when I gave them this in the in the in the final, a student, you know, <laughs> funny they didn't ask in the in the final, but like I think one year later, he said, I just need to understand one thing. How could we cool? Like we send the uh, how the thing work in when it's like really cold outside? It's like it was twenty, I think, in the problem statement. The outside air was twenty or something Fahrenheit. He said, wouldn't it freeze? And I said, no, it wouldn't freeze because it's not water. It's running a refrigerant that can really go to very, very cold temperature. How does the uh, COVID-19 uh, thingy get refrigerated? Right? You need a refrigeration cycle to, to keep it really cold. All right. So point is, if we know the two temperatures, 80 and 40, and we know how much is the QH that we need. You require the speed tuber hour to not to drop. You need this cooling, this heating all the time. How much compressor power do we need? Okay, that is the calculation that we need to understand. So to recap, to recap, given the th and tl okay and q dot h and required and required is or compressor and the cob because he's also asking for it in the project okay so let me plot my cycle again in bh diagram is the best and here is, let's say this is 80 degree Fahrenheit and say let, it's, this is 40 degree here, okay? So that cycle need to be even hotter than this and even colder than this, right? So it go like this. Like this, like this, like this. So if I call this one, two, three, four. So Q dot H is M dot multiply by H2 minus H3. And And work compressor is work compressor is m dot multiplied by h two minus h one, and that is the ideal work. If you divide it over eta compressor as atomic efficiency, you will get the actual work. Okay, where well, this is h two s, this is h two s. So this is. S equal constant. Okay, and so what is the COP? The COP is the output, which is Q dot H over the work compressor. What is that COP will look like? It depends on that temperature range. When it's like really big, it, the COP would be very small, maybe 1.5 or something. 
And when it's when this different range is very tiny, it can go really high, it can go to seven or higher. So what does seven mean? It means that you get QH seven times the work compressor. Okay. So when people sell heat pump at Lowe's and Home Depot, and they say the COB is six or five, they need to say at what temperature did they calculate this? At what temperature difference? Okay, and so funny is that they tell you that sometimes they actually do this. They, they calculate the COP for heating 40 degree water at 40 degree air. So when it's like you're heating 40 degree water with 40 degree air, I mean, the difference is gonna be how much? Very little, because of course you have to be hotter than the water and a little bit colder than the air. The difference is not zero, otherwise we are joking, but it's gonna be little, right? Because you just need to be a little bit above the water to heat it and a little bit colder than the air to cool it, right? But what I'm trying to say is that they do it at, at very small delta T. That's why the COP will become really hot. Okay, it's like, Imagine if someone tell you the mile per gallon of the, of the which actually happened, the mile per gallon for the car is only when one person, same person driving the car on the highway without wind. Will that always happen? No, but I mean, they have to pick the best scenario for that, All right? So you are a little bit overweight and you're driving and the car never get the mile per gallon they put on the sticker, okay? So to, so to calculate this, we just need to know how to get the H's for everything. So this H, how do we get this H? This is H G. And then how do we get this H at one? You know the, the, the pressure and you know, ouch. you know the pressure B2 and you know the S2, S2 is equal to S1, right? And the B2, you will get it from T high. It's the same pressure as the B saturation, right? And three, that is easy. That is HF. And this one, four, H4 is the same as H3. So all the H's in this cycle is known. Therefore, all the Q's are known, right? And you'll be able to calculate the compressor. Of course, how do we get this M dot? So Q H is M dot, we said H2 minus H3, right? And H2, not H2S. H2 would be a little bit here. So this is how you calculate the M dot. You should know what is the Q dot H. That's coming from the swing pool. The swing bull need that Q dot H. Therefore, this is the M dot that you need. And from that, at that temperature range, this is how much is the work compressor you will end up needing. Okay, and, and we said last time, it makes sense why when the temperature range increase, this thing will suck. As the air get colder, huh, and you are operating here, you can see how how this range four minus one gets smaller while this get bigger. So as you go lower and lower in temperature range, like big, big difference between the cooling and the heating, work compressor increase huh? and that can, this is smaller and, <coughs> and the difference here would be not to be big, not that how Q dot H is work compressor plus Q dot L from the first law. Whatever heat you are sucking from the air plus the work compressor is what we're gonna be to Q dot H. So as you go down, this Q dot L becomes smaller. There's not that much space for it on the dome. And so if this Q dot L become almost zero, what will the COB be? as I increase the temperature range and the Q dot L becomes smaller, the, what would be zero? No, COB would be 
As Q.L becomes smaller and smaller, C.O.B will become infinity. No. It will be one. C.O.B would be one. All the work become all the Q dot H. Is that bad? This is just electric heater then. But I paid for a heat pump, compressor and condenser and evaporator and refrigerant and so, I mean, if I wanted to buy electric heater, I just can make one myself. Let's get a tungsten wire, plug it in the, in the electric power, and we are done. So a heat pump is way expensive than electric heater. See, I hate electric heater. My grandfather used to have this electric heater. And you know that, like, like the, the one that gets super hot with a candle and like electric filament. And it caught fire in the bedroom. The whole bedroom start to burn. He was, he was sleeping. <laughs> and the people outside know the fire coming and they came, crack, broke the door, broke into the bedroom. He yes. locked himself always in the, in the bedroom and saved him from his bed while he was sleeping. So I, I hate electric heater because also similarly wise, they almost killed my grandfather. And thermally, they suck, right? They suck because way sucker than gas heater. Why? Because gas heater, at least they are using natural gas. But electric heater use electric power that was done by 40% efficiency in a thermal power plant. So that electric heater is using twice the energy that a by default, twice the energy that a gas heater would do, right? Because the gas heater using natural gas, natural gas take almost go with 50% to become electricity. Right? You understand? Right? Very good. So, so that's why huh? increasing that range is not really gonna help. And that's why thinking that COP of the heat pump constant throughout the day is not correct. Because as the air temperature go from four degrees C to 18 degrees C, the COP will be different, right? Questions about heat pump? You got it, right? Okay, so of course, you know, the, the, this heat pump, the, the idea behind it is, or the, the, the amazing thing is that valve, huh? the exit valve of the compressor and how he can switch the exit from going to the outside to going to the inside, going to the outside in the summer let's get cooled by the air to going inside in the winter. Let's heat the inside. Okay, that is the valve over here. And, and we talked about this last time, right? When we said how if you bury it in the ground, it's an extra cost, but the ground is more forgiving than the air. It's more friendly than the air. So you wouldn't have this big difference. So while the, while the air is four, the ground is probably gonna be a little bit warmer than this. So now what is this? This, this equation huh, is the ideal heat pump equation. Okay, the ideal heat, sorry, this is the ideal, uh, the ideal heat engine equation, and this is the ideal heat pump equation. So both of them are based on Carnot cycle. How does Carnot cycle look like? Carnot cycle is simply, rather than this shape, huh? they will actually on a TS diagram, they would look like this. So 
So that is constant temperature heat addition. It's similar to this guy. Okay, and this is constant temperature heat rejection. That's similar to this guy. And this is isentropic compression and this is isentropic expansion. So it's it's this, right? And it's also it's also isentropic expansion over here. So it will go like this. So this this Carnot cycle. Huh? When it, so of course, when you are using it for power to generate power, it actually looks like this. It rotate this way. So you rotate like this and you gonna reduce work net. Okay. This produce work net. You rotate this way and you gonna move heat from a low temperature to a high temperature reservoir. So when it work like a a heat pump, sorry, a heat uh, a thermal engine, just like a power plant. The Ethernet, or sorry, not the Ethernet, what am I doing? The Ether thermal. The Ether thermal is work net over Q edit. That's for every circle, every cycle in the world. It's work net over Q edit. But for this particular rectangular shape Carnot cycle, that work net over Q edit become become TH minus TL over TH, where the temperature is in Kelvin. And the same thing for a heat pump. So a heat pump, COP is Q dot H over work that compressor. That's for any heat pump, working on Weber compression, working on Brayton cycle, working on any cycle you want, the COB is simply the output over the input. What output do we get? The heat in Q dot H. What do we pay? The work compressor. Okay, or let's call it work net. Work net. Well, I mean, the Weber compression cycle, you don't really get a work from the expansion. The expansion is just like a throttling device. Pressure drop, temperature drop, but you don't get anything. Okay. But, but let's for, for accuracy, let's call it work net because there are refrigeration cycle and heat bomb cycle that you can get work from the expansion like the, the air standard Brayton cycle. If you reverse it, it become basically cooling. Rather than getting work, which what we will see today when we go through gas turbine, you actually get heating and cooling. Okay, so this, for a Carnot cycle become TH over TH minus TL. Okay, so that equation, we only use it if we have Carnot cycle. Huh? Only if we have a rectangle cycle, we use this. And, and if this was a refrigerator rather than a heat pump, so the goal is not, the goal is not to heat the swimming pool, but the cool the, the goal is the, the goal is to actually cool the air. Okay, the equation become the COB become Q dot L over work compressor. Why Q dot L? That's the goal. The goal is big Q dot L. It's a fridge, you just need to suck the low temperature heat. You don't care how much you get dumped on the outside. You just care about does it really does it really cool my place or not? And so this then become TL over TH minus TL. So again, the definition when I say Q dot L over work work uh, net, that's for every cycle. But this part is only for the Carnot cycle. This is only for the Carnot cycle. This is only for the Carnot cycle. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, so Ita Carnot, if it's a heat engine, COB Carnot, if it's a heat bomb, COB refrigeration, TC over TH minus TC. Okay. 
Okay. So we we can can we use this calculation just to estimate roughly? Listen to this. Can we use this equation just to estimate roughly how much the COB do in, in our swimming pool? Yeah, roughly, very roughly. This is like the ideal cycle ever. That's the difference between can I can I use this to estimate the efficiency of the Jinx power plant? This is really the, the, the dream. So you use this calculation, you figure, well, the efficiency is like 70%. Yeah, but the actual cycle is 40%. Okay, but at least, you know, this can tell you what is the variation or show you how much it will deteriorate from the morning till the evening. Huh? If you wanna say, well, if the outside is 40 Fahrenheit and then the outside is 60 Fahrenheit, how much will that change my COP? And you, you use this equation because what is the alternative? The alternative is to do a BH diagram and calculate those at every different temperature, that's a mess, okay? But you can, uh, and by the way, when I said 40 and, and uh, 80, one of you should jump and said, wait, TC is 40? No, TC need to be even lower than 40. This is the temperature of the refrigerant. So if the air is at 40, TC need to be even lower than him, right? And TH, is it 80? No, that's the, the swimming pool. We want to, to make him hotter than 80. So the refrigerant need to be even hotter than this, right? So this TH and TC are actually the Refrigerant temperature at the hot and the cold reservoir. Good. So it's 8.44. I think we can take a 15 minutes break. And after we come back, we will go to chapter five, which is gas turbine, so that we can see how does a gas firing equipment get analyzed. Any quick question before we go to the break? All right, let's have a restroom break. 